We're 94 days into our Bible reading plan, and today we're reading Numbers chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 27, Proverbs chapter 28, Mark chapter 14, verse 66 to verse 72, Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16 to verse 24, and Psalms chapter 94. We're reading from the Berean Standard Bible, Numbers chapter 1. On the first day of the second month of the second year, after the Israelites had come out of the land of Egypt, the Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the wilderness of Sinai. He said, Take a census of the whole congregation of Israel by their clans and families, listing every man by name, one by one. You and Haran are to number those who are 20 years of age or older by their divisions, everyone who can serve in Israel's army, and one man from each tribe, the head of each family, must be there with you. These are the names of the men who had to assist you, from the tribe of Reuben, Eliza, son of Shedel, from Simeon, Shelumiel, son of Zuri Shaddai, from Judah, Nashon, son of Aminadab, from Issachar, Nathanael, son of Zua, from Zebulon, Eliab, son of Elon, from the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, son of Amihud, and from Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Pedazo, from Benjamin, Abidan, son of Gideoni, from Dan, Ahiza, son of Amishadai, from Asha, Hagel, son of Okran, from Gad, Elihasaf, son of Deohel, and from Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enan. These men were appointed from the congregation. They were the leaders of the tribes of their fathers, the heads of the clans of Israel. So Moses and Aaron took these men who had been designated by name, and on the first day of the second month, they assembled the whole congregation and recorded their ancestry by clans and families, counting one by one the names of those 20 years of age or older, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. So Moses numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai from the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, according to the records of their clans and families, counting one by one the names of every male, 20 years of age or older, who could serve in the army. Those registered to the tribe of Reuben numbered 46,500. From the sons of Simeon, according to the records of their clans and families, counting one by one the names of every male, 20 years of age or older, who could serve in the army. Those registered to the tribe of Simeon numbered 59,300. From the sons of God, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older, who could serve in the army. Those registered to the tribe of God numbered 45,650. From the sons of Judah, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Judah numbered 74,600. From the sons of Issachar, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Issachar numbered 54,400. From the sons of Zebulon, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Zebulon numbered 57,400. From the sons of Joseph, from the sons of Ephraim, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Ephraim numbered 40,500. And from the sons of Manasseh, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Manasseh numbered 32,200. From the sons of Benjamin, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Benjamin numbered 35,400. From the sons of Dan, according to the records of their clans and families, 
counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army. Those registered to the tribe of Dan numbered 62,700. From the sons of Hasha, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Asha numbered 41,500. From the sons of Naphtali, according to the records of their clans and families, counting the names of all those 20 years of age or older who could serve in the army, those registered to the tribe of Naphtali numbered 53,400. These were the men numbered by Moses and Aaron with the assistance of the 12 leaders of Israel, each one representing his family. So all the Israelites, 20 years of age or older, who could serve in Israel's army were counted according to their families. And all those counted totaled 603,550. The Levites, however, were not numbered along with them by the tribe of their fathers. For the Lord had said to Moses, do not number the tribe of Levi in the census with the other Israelites. Instead, you are to appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, all its furnishings and everything in it. They shall carry the tabernacle and all its articles, care for it and camp around it. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down. And whenever it is to be pitched, the Levites are to set it up. Any outsider who goes near it must be put to death. The Israelites are to camp by their divisions, each man in his own camp and under his own standard. But the Levites are to camp around the tabernacle of the testimony and watch over it so that no wrath will fall on the congregation of Israel. So the Levites are responsible for the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus, the Israelites did everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now we're going to read Proverbs chapter 27. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another praise you and not your own mouth. A stranger and not your own lips. A stone is heavy and sand is a burden, but aggravation from a fool outweighs them both. Wrath is cruel and anger is like a flood. But who can withstand jealousy? Better an open rebuke than love that is concealed. The wounds of a friend are faithful, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The soul that is full loads on it. But to a hungry soul, any bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest is a man who wanders from his home. Oil and incense bring joy to the heart. And the sweetness of a friend is counsel to the soul. Do not forsake your friend or your father's friend. And do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. Be wise, my son, and bring joy to my heart so that I can answer him who taunts me. The prudent see danger and take cover, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Take the garment of him who posts security for a stranger. Get collateral if it is for a foreigner. If one blesses his neighbor with a loud voice early in the morning, it will be counted to him as a curse. A constant dripping on a rainy day and a contentious woman are her like. Restraining her is like holding back the wind or grasping oil with one's right hand. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens another. Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit, and he who looks after his master will be honored. As water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the true man. Sheol and Habadon are never satisfied, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. A crucible for silver and a furnace for gold. But a man is tested by the praise accorded him. Though you grind a full like grain with mortar and a pestle, yet his folly will not depart from him. Be sure to know the state of your flocks and pay close attention to your herds, for riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to every generation. When hay is removed and new growth appears, 
and the grain from the hills is gathered, the lambs will provide you with clothing, and the goats with the price of a field. You will have plenty of goat's milk to feed you, food for your household, and nourishment for your maid servants. Our next reading is Proverbs chapter 28. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. A land in rebellion has many rulers, but a man of understanding and knowledge maintains order. A destitute leader who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law resist them. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord comprehend fully. Better a poor man who walks with integrity than a rich man whose ways are perverse. A discerning son keeps the law, but a companion of glutons disgraces his father. He who increases his wealth by interest and usury lays it up for one who is kind to the poor. Whoever turns his hair away from hearing the law, even his prayer is detestable. He who leads the upright along the path of evil will fall into his own pit, but the blameless will inherit what is good. A rich man is wise in his own eyes, but a poor man with discernment sees through him. When the righteous triumph, there is great glory, but when the wicked rise, men hide themselves. He who conceals his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them will find mercy. Blessed is the man who is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart falls into trouble. Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a helpless people. A leader who lacks judgment is also a great oppressor, but he who hates dishonest profit will prolong his days. A man burdened by blood guilt will flee into the pit, let no one support him. He who walks with integrity will be kept safe, but whoever is perverse in his ways will suddenly fall. The one who works his land will have plenty of food, but whoever chases fantasies will have his fill of poverty. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but one eager to be rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, yet a man will do wrong. For a piece of bread. A stingy man hastens after wealth and does not know that poverty awaits him. He who rebukes a man will later find more favor than one who flatters with his tongue. He who robs his father or mother, saying, It is not wrong, is a companion to the man who destroys. A greedy man stirs up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will prosper. He who trusts in himself is a fool. But one who walks in wisdom will be safe. Whoever gives to the poor will not be in need, but he who hides his hides will receive many curses. When the wicked come to power, people hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous flourish. Now we're going to read Mark chapter 14, verse 66 to verse 72. While Peter was in the courtyard below, one of the Servant girls of the high priest came down and saw him warming himself there. She looked at Peter and said, You also were with Jesus the Nazarene. But he denied it. I do not know or even understand what you are talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway and the rooster crowed. There the servant girl saw him and again said to those standing nearby, This man is one of them. But he denied it again. After a little while, those standing nearby said once more to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. But he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Now we're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16 to verse 24. But thanks be to God, who put into the heart of Titus the same devotion I have for you. For not only did he welcome our appeal, but he is eagerly coming to you of his own volition. Along with Titus, we are sending the brother who is praised 
by all the churches for his work in the gospel. More than that, this brother was chosen by the churches to accompany us with the offering, the gracious gift we administer to honor the Lord himself and to show our eagerness to help. We hope to avoid any criticism of the way we administer this generous gift, for we are taking great care to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. And we are sending along with them our brother, whose earnestness has been proven many times and in many ways, and now even more so by his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker among you. As for our brothers, they are messengers of the churches to the glory of Christ. In full view of the churches, then, show these men the proof of your love and the reason for our boasting about you. Our next reading is Psalms chapter 94, which is the last passage for today. O Lord, God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. How long will the wicked, O Lord, how long will the wicked exalt? They pour out arrogant words, all workers of iniquity boast. They crush your people, O Lord, they oppress your heritage. They kill the widow and the foreigner, they murder the fatherless. They say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob pays no heed. Take notice, O senseless among the people. O fools, when will you be wise? He who has fixed the hair, can he not hear? He who forms the height, can he not see? He who admonishes the nations, does he not discipline? He who teaches man, does he lack knowledge? The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man you discipline, O Lord and teach from your law, to grant him relief from days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people, he will never abandon his heritage. Surely judgment will again be righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will stand for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my helper, I would soon have dwelt in the abode of silence. If I say, my foot is slipping, your loving devotion, O Lord, supports me. When anxiety overwhelms me, your consolation delights my soul. Can a corrupt throne be your ally? Won't devising mischief by decree? They band together against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has been my stronghold and my God is my rock of refuge. He will bring upon them their own iniquity and destroy them for their wickedness. The Lord our God will destroy them. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word and may the word fall on good ground in our hearts so that it can bring forth fruit as we make a commitment to being doers of the word, not errors only. In Jesus' name, amen.